Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about the structures external to the cell wall. Let's get started. Structures external to the cell wall include the capsule, the flagella, the axial filament, the fimbriae, and the pili. Let's start by first talking about the capsule. When you hear the word capsule, you might think about pills because there are some medications that are within a capsule or a shell. This concept is the same regarding capsules of microorganisms. This is what a bacterial cell, represented by this black line, would look like if it had a capsule or a coat of sugar surrounding it. You could also think of the capsule as a shell for the bacterium. Capsules help bacteria adhere to each other as well as surfaces like your teeth. They also help bacteria avoid phagocytosis or the process of getting swallowed up and broken down by white blood cells. Capsules help protect against desiccation or drying out, as well as actions from antibiotics or oxygen toxicity. Lastly, a capsule is a virulence factor. A virulence factor is any trait or feature of a microorganism that increases its ability to infect and to cause disease in a host. Think about it. Earlier, we talked about one of the functions of a capsule being that it helps bacteria evade phagocytosis or the process of being swallowed up and broken down by white blood cells. So if a bacterium has a capsule, it goes undetected by white blood cells, giving it an opening to replicate to large enough amounts to cause disease within its host. Next, let's talk about the flagella. The flagellum of a bacterium is a tail-like appendage that allows the bacterium to move. Flagella is the plural, while flagellum is the singular. In prokaryotes, aka bacteria or archaea, we find the flagellum anchored to the cell wall and the cell membrane of the microorganism. There are four types of flagella arrangements. These are monotrichus, lophotrichus, ampitrichus, and petritrichus. Let's start by talking about monotrichus. Monotrichus or polar is when we have one flagellum at one end of the bacterium. Lophotrichus is when we have multiple flagellum at one end of the bacterium. Ampitrichus is when we have a singular flagellum at both ends of the bacterium. Lastly, we have Petritrichus, which is when we have flagella all over the bacterium. Let's move on to talking about the axial filament. The axial filament is a bundle of endoflagella that allows the spiral jet to move. As you can see in this diagram, the axial filament wraps around the cell body of the spiral jet. The axial filament is found in the periplasm of the spiral jet, and when it rotates, this allows the spiral jet to move. Lastly, we have fimbriae and pili. Fimbria is a short hair-like appendage that enables bacterial attachment. And what this means is that it allows bacteria to attach to each other as well as to epithelial surfaces. In this image, the individual lines represent the fimbria. And when we're discussing the plural, we use the term fimbriae. Fimbriae can be found at one end of the bacterium or spread all over evenly. The pilus is a hollow appendage that allows bacteria to transfer their DNA and to move. The plural of pilus is referred to as pili. If we had a bacterium, this would be its pilus. Let's say that our original bacterium here had a plasmid that contains genes that encode for antibiotic resistance towards some sort of drug. The function of the pilus here would be a passage that links the original bacterium to a new bacterium that doesn't have this antibiotic resistance gene. 
And we call this pillus here the conjugative pillus or the sex pillus. While both of them are shorter than the flagella, the fimbriae is shorter than the pili, as well as thinner than the pili. And one more thing, the fimbriae is much more numerous than the pili.